Okay, so this is the machine we just uh, finished setting up and configuring, and this is the GUI for it. So I just wanted to um, go through a couple of things. I had to set up the audio, which was a little weird. I'm using a Blue Snowball microphone for this, so I had to run a record dash L to list out the hardware, and then I grabbed card two at zero, and I had to set that in the configuration for uh, the desktop recorder to get audio. So in any event, at this point, we're going to be compiling a kernel. And for that, I'm going to be making, um, oh yeah, that's right, I was going to show you. So I have all my stuff configured now. I have Google Chrome running, Sublime Text is there, record my desktop is there, Quick Terminal, which is this right here. So what I'm going to be doing now is creating a directory for source. I'm going to create source and then a Linux directory beneath it. So CD, C Linux, and I'm going to download the latest source code. Now, when I say latest, I mean the latest functional source code. 3.5 and 3.5.2 are currently suffering from a bug where PCI pass-through fails to accept um, USB controllers. For some reason, I was able to get my VGA pass-through with graphics working, but I wasn't able to get the USB controllers working, and I wasted seven hours of video recordings to get to that stage. And so I've learned from my mistake, and this time I performed a dry run before uh, before creating the video recordings. So you know, I actually have a really, really awesome god that I found, and I think that the creator of this is fantastic. Um, they gave us a list of things that we need. Some of them are already with the system, but for the most part, this is exactly what we need to compile the Linux kernel. It's a bare minimum, and this guide is like six lines, and that's awesome to me. So we're going to do sudo aptitude install, and we're going to install these packages. And that should be all the packages we need for our kernel, or to create it anyways. Now we're going to add a concurrency factor to the uh, kernel package configuration. This way it uh, uses concurrency. Compiling a kernel will take roughly 20 minutes, so it is a very long process and I will be cutting the video for that duration simply because I don't know how much space record my desktop is going to be using up to record these videos. So, and I have a feeling it's going to be a lot. So we're going to extract the uh, kernel using tar, xf, linux kernel, there we go, and then we can remove the, that file. Now again, I mentioned this before, but compiling a Linux kernel will consume 7 gigabytes of space. A uh, little under, but you want to have at least 7 gigs free. So if I do df-h, right now I have a home directory right here, and I have plenty of space available, and that's kind of why I created it. So rm linux, there we go, cd linux here. All right, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to copy our configuration for the current kernel to dot config in this directory. This way it uses that when we do make menu config to set the defaults. Now I've created a nice uh, written tutorial which if you're following has a tree map of this entire process here. And I'm going to full screen this so we can make it easier to see. So what this is going to do for us is it's going to allow us to configure the kernel for the best performance. I'm going to set a low latency desktop I'm going to be setting the frequency to a thousand hertz and there's a couple of really cool features now if you press H on any of these you'll get more information so for example this says it can have a significant IO reduction if you use it with Zen for example for transcendent memory so I think I'm gonna turn that on here we go timer frequency we're gonna set that to 1000 double tap it escape to go backwards. Now there are a couple of options that we can set. If you put a uh, forward slash next to the shift key, you can actually type in a search. And this will get you information on, for example, all the flags you want to look for that have Zen in them. So just an example. We're going to go to bus options. Now these are very important. Stub and Zen front end are required if we want to do pass throughs. You want those for sure. We're going to go to device drivers. And here we're going to go through block devices. And for block devices, we're going to go down here where we have virtual and Zen. There we go. We're going to go to network devices next. And enable Ethernet driver support for a 
netzen multi port gigabit ethernet. We also want to go down to, zen, oh wait, right, still inside here we have zen and zen. And these are for para-virtualized or uh, PDHVM. So a lot of them aren't entirely necessary, but since we're running Zen, you may as well have everything turned on. At least that's my way of thinking. And for so far, it's been a complete success. So we're going to turn all those on. This is the only one we don't want to turn on. I found that it creates problems, and it requires a specific flag. Um, this one here, ACPI processor. If you want to give it a test run, you're welcome to do so. I have, and it was not successful. So. Turn on EFI variable support, and there we go. If I double tap escape from the main menu, it'll ask me to save it, and that's done. Now, if you're running through a SSH connection, you would want to run screen right now. That's because if you don't, and your connection gets disconnected partway through the compilation process, it would uh, cancel it out, and you'd have to start over. So, just a recommendation. All right, we were going to edit uh, kernel package. And we're going to add a new line called concurrency level, and we're going to set it to double the number of physical cores. I have a core i7, which is a four physical core, eight virtual core and processor, so I'm setting it to eight. Um, and that right there should do that. And then what we're going to do is make kpkg clean, and after this we'll be running a fake root command to build our .deb package, which we can use to install. Our kernel. Now the reason for a .deb package uh, varies. For me it's beneficial because it makes it easy to remove the kernel later. So we're going to set revision Now this needs to start with a number as of the latest um, GCC. So just take a note that if you set revision to a letter first, GCC may fail. And after running this, it will take roughly 20 minutes. So I'm going to cut the video right now, and I'll be back as soon as it's finished. Okay, picking up where we left off, I just finished the compilation, and if we go up a directory, we now have a .deb file. And this is what we can use to install our new kernels. We're going to do sudo dpkg i and linux image and this right here will install the kernel using what we just compiled and i also want to show you when it's done installing how large the source files are compared to the .deb file the .deb file is portable so i'm actually going to back that up uh, and the directory we just used for all the compiling that can actually be deleted so if i do df-h you remember how i had only one gigabyte used i now have 11. So yeah, it consumed a whole lot of space. Now, if I do dash L, you'll notice that, LH for humanly readable, the actual package to install the kernel that I just customized is only 33 megabytes. It's extremely tiny. So, just a note. Now, if I restart the system now, we will have a new kernel, and I will be resuming it, resuming this video once I've rebooted. Okay, so coming from last time, we just finished installing a custom kernel, and if I now run uname-r, we'll see 3.4.9 is there. So, that's it. Uh, this is after the system rebooted, of course. Uh, the next video will cover Zen installation, or more specifically, compiling Zen, then installing and configuring it.